Hey everybody, welcome to part number three of this Chief Specialty Pattern Tooling Series. And in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through, and we're gonna work on this lower portion of his face uh, and all the floral work that makes up the face of the chief there. And we're gonna put in all the detail work to that. So I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna do things out of order of what I typically would do. Um, normally I wait and save my backgrounding uh, until the end, but to help show this and let you uh, see a little bit better about what I'm doing here and kind of make distinctions between the vine work. I'm going to go ahead and run this bar grounder in here and uh, and we're going to fill in all that background so you can start seeing what's vine work and what's background. But an easy way to tell uh, if you're new to leather work and trying to figure out, you know, where's background, where's not. Um, we talked through beveling, which how to decide where to bevel at. But now if you look at a space that like this here for instance every line around here is beveled in towards it so everything else is standing up above and that's back behind that's going to be a really good indication that that's a background piece so we're going to follow that kind of principle as we go through here and we will start getting this background in so we can get to some of the detail tools we're breaking this pattern up into some bite-sized chunks. The uh, part one and part two of this series were a little bit lengthier videos. Um, this one I anticipate to be um, a little quicker than the last two videos just by keeping it in this section here. But I wanna get this broke down into these bite-sized chunks where it's easy to take on a pattern like this um, and hopefully take away some of the intimidation factor uh, for somebody that may be a beginner or new to leather work but wants to kind of try try one of these outside the box type of patterns so hello hello I appreciate you guys jumping on thank you for all the likes and shares and comments you guys have been great following along in this series and all the other um, recent tooling series that we've been doing working through all of the patterns that I offer for sale I wanted to actually get live tutorials on every one of the patterns so um, appreciate you guys hanging out with me and taking these all in hello hello I see some familiar names popping in there And as always, if you guys have questions as we're going, um, be sure and let me know here in the comments. I will try to keep an eye and answer those the best I can as we're live here this evening. Um, if you're watching this on the replay, don't hesitate to leave a comment in there as well. I do my best to try to keep up with every comment that comes in um, I do miss some occasionally I apologize uh, in advance if that ever happens to you but if you've been following along very very long you know that I do try to stick with that uh, getting your comments answered um, if you let it dry and you continue the next day you add water and the lines already beveled one day before I'm trying to Louie I'm trying to get your comment to open up the rest of the way here open more than regular um no the uh, the question is and if hopefully I'm understanding you correctly here you're asking if I tool this one day and then set it aside like we've been doing actually we've not finished it um, one day so we've gone back to tool it again the next day and when I re-wet that leather is it opening up my previously beveled lines more than normal um, no it's not the so this leather I have let dry completely out um, in between every stage of it that we've done here actually you guys 
um, have seen the entire tooling time on this piece of leather if you've been following along in the series. But now I could, uh, one thing that would be probably helpful is if I knew I was going to be coming back to tooling this is taking that piece and actually putting it in a uh, plastic bag. That will help hold a lot of the moisture in there. Um, so it's not having to re-wet as much, but I haven't been, I've been, um, I've been uh, just letting it dry out all the way and then, I, um, then I've been re-wetting it as I come in. And I mean, you can see these bevel lines look just like they did when we got done with our video last night. Um, the one thing that re-wetting will do is in some cases it can take out a little bit of the burnishing effect so you'll lose just a little touch of color in there um, that you've achieved with uh, having the right moisture content and striking your tools down gets that burnishing effect uh, which is the darkening of the leather uh, you guys are going to be able to see that really well here this next tool that we're going to use i'm going to get my uh, thumbprint out and we're going to put some shading in there but that uh, that burnishing effect uh, like if you were if you were doing stuff where you weren't adding any finish to it just maybe an oil finish and you weren't putting any dyes or antiques or anything like that on it would be very important to try to get all of your color from um, from your tooling um, but if where I use a lot of the dyes and the antiques, um, all my color is going to be coming from that. Not all of it, but I can get a lot of color from those finishes. So I'm not as concerned with um, with getting all that color. But that being said, if you have a chance to get a project done in one setting or at least when I come in here for the for the finish detail work, I'm going to go through and roll through it all the way with the moisture content that I have in here. Um, so I'm not having to re-wet it as much, but especially if you're using finished products, it is not the end of the world. Now, as I put in this background space, one place in this pattern I do want to point out to you in this little pod right here, um, you'll notice I did not background that spot. Same thing in the bucking horse. I pointed out a few spots there where we did not um, background inside there. And you'll say, hey, you just said that if all the lines are beveling in. Well, I said if all the lines are beveling in, that's a good indication, but it's not a for sure every time. Um, now I could background that in. You'd finish out your pattern and probably not know the difference. Um, but I'm going to leave that unbevel or unbackgrounded because I'm going to put some cross hatching in there and make that almost a seed pod sitting in there. So just, you know, I'm not missing that. I'm actually skipping it on purpose. So this next tool that we're going to get, uh, now we're going to fly through getting the detail in his face here already just by putting that background in. Boy, that stands that out a lot more, right? Okay. This next tool is going to be a vertical line thumbprint. And I don't know how good it's going to actually focus in on my tool there, but <clears throat> excuse me, it has the lines running right up and down that tool. Uh, that's going to help with some texture in here and let me flow down my lines. So we're going to start right down here at the bottom of the pattern. I'm going to use this for some shading. And this is a tool I got from Barry King. The sizing on this I'd have to I'm gonna have to check I will check by the end of the video here if um, I did finally get his catalog sitting here close so I could double check all my tools and I just can't remember on this one <laughs> want to say it's a zero but I gotta check now I run this tool a little bit different than a lot of people a lot of people are gonna just use it and 
get it out there on the end of something and hit it and leave it sit in like that. I don't like uh, doing that as much. I, there, there's a, a place for that for sure. But um, my style that I do, I, I run that almost more like a bevel and actually run that tool and fade it along there. Josh, you're betting a number one on the size there, huh? All right, now I gotta check, seeing how we're talking about it. Yeah, grab my catalog and double check. I circled the tools that I was gonna be using here. Bump it up. Vertical. Oh, you got it right, spot on there, Josh. Yes, number one. A vertical line thumbprint. Good eye. Now you can see when I run that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this camera angle's all right, and and we're kind of got the right zoom there. But you can see as I run that, I'm leaving just this highlighted ridge right on the outside there, um, and that's too far away and you lose a lot of your effect and it really just looks like a tool mark you know if I run this just like that that just looks like a tool mark in there and and looks pretty choppy but now watch instead if I come over top of that I'm gonna run it right out there towards that line fade it along there Okay, and that creates that, that little highlighted ridge right out along there. Kind of brings that stem and pops it out there. So, hello, hello. I see some more of you joining on with us here. Appreciate you taking a chance to come on live. <clears throat> Let's see Julie on there. Miss Julie, she's got a classroom up in Ellensburg. She teaches some leather classes up there. If you guys are up in uh, kind of that central Washington area, looking to get a hand at some leather work, definitely get a hold of Julie there. She's got some really cool things going on. Hopefully all this, uh, all this craziness with the virus slows down and things open back up. I'll be back up at Julie's in June to do the class that had to get, uh, postponed oh John you've noticed the camera angles and they're better cool 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 uh, I'd actually switch some stuff up on request of the, the uh, YouTube followers talking on the replay saying that switching this around to a to a landscape kind of angle or view is a lot better on the replay when we post there so I tried that and it turns out that makes a pretty good effect on the live video as well apparently so I have a hard time telling on on this end um, I think probably because there's just enough stuff coming across my screen with the comments and whatnot I know I could turn those off but I like to keep those on as much as I can to try to answer any of the live questions that we get. Okay, just working my way right up this fine work. Um, you can see it, as I run this tool, I can kind of create little, little ridges almost right in the middle of that sort of stump there. And we'll be able to come in at the end of that and and put a little lift on there and really get that accentuated right through the center there. Okay, now this swirl here, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna shade that. We will come back to that with, uh, with our veiner here in a few minutes.
trying not to talk over this whole video so you can kind of hear hear the difference in that tool when I'm striking it to kind of fade that out there and fade those lines and one of these one of the things about these tools is I'm tipping it up this way and running it back that way um, and that's lifting that that toe in there so it's picking that up and this can fade out across there and then wherever I if I stop right there that back side it's faded out um, and you'll notice I'm also I also start rolling that this way um, as well so I'm softening the edges on those lines If I just laid that down and whack, hit a full tool impression, it would, wouldn't give you any flow at all. You'd get, uh, get a lot of burnishing out of it, you know, you get that darker look, but you won't get the flow that I'm after with that tool. Okay, now these that roll over here, I'm just going to tap along that outside just give a little highlight texture that our antique can pick up later on there we go so I can show you that one a little more close up so you can see see where I'm just barely getting over those just adding that little extra shadow in there um, you know I don't want to hit them real deep because that is actually curving around there so this is the outside edge of it now here where we're on the inside of this thing that's folded over to create his nose i'm going to get um, pretty dark in there when i come in to the inside of that catch one more little sticker vine stick on the inside there flip that tool around to get the bigger edge of it Now here, to create some shadow from that rollover, watch this, I'm gonna turn that, not just straight there, but at a little bit of an angle that way, tipping up. We're gonna run it right along there and get that shadowing in there. I'm keeping it right next to that line, just like if it was a bevel. And as I get down here, I'm gonna roll that and Fade it to where those lines are rolling straight down there again. There, see that look that gives that rolling and folding over like that? Now on the outside of these ones, come highlight those ridges, fade that back there. Coming in to the flower here, I'm really going to try to stay out there and create that extra highlighted ridge. Uh, John here asked if I'm going to show the dyeing and antiquing on this. Um, you know, I hadn't planned on it as of yet. I think somebody asked the same question on the bucking horse too. So we'll have to, we may... We'll get into to a little bit of dyeing and antique. Um, it won't necessarily come at the end of this tooling series here, but we'll probably, I'm gonna play with some ideas and we'll do a whole, probably a whole series just on finish and dyeing and antiquing and lacquer and all that good stuff um, in the near future. Because all of these patterns that, um, going through and tooling up in these tooling series they are actually in a big stack right in front of my marble up here and so we're building up quite an array there's the bucking horse we've got done with before um, 
So I'm building up quite a stack of things that we can do some really fun uh, dye work and show some different colors as well as maybe some side-by-side -side comparisons I think would be some neat videos as well. Um, if, if you guys would like to see some side-by-side -side comparisons on different finishes um, and products, I've done some testing before. Uh, those of you in the Leather Life classroom have got, um, got to see some of that side-by-side -side testing as well, but um, if, if you guys would like to see some more of that with some different products, let me know. Uh, throw some, some likes or comments up uh, and just kind of give me that feedback and let me know that is what you'd be interested in and we'll try to get some of that put together. Okay, that shader is going to go away right now, my thumbprint. Now I'm going to come to a little tiny lifter. Um, which this one is a little homemade guy that I have. Um, I was actually just talking to Barry King the other day, and he said that they had since come out with a little super tiny lifter. So I'm excited to get one of his and try it because he is no doubt a better tool maker than I am. Um, so as much as I love this little guy, I can't wait to try his. Um, and and see how that runs so i'll be getting one of those in the near future to show you as well but for now i'm going to be using this guy that i do really love and just coming in those ridges and picking up you can see it just really highlighting right where those little tight ridges are we're putting in any stops out here on the ends like this okay really makes a difference uh, I'm going to come in at the bottom of this little seed pot here. We're going to stick one of those as well. Quick little highlight across there. One right here. There we go. I think we got that. Uh, Charlie, if on your belts, if you don't finish tooling, how do you keep it cased? Um, Great question, and I go back and I actually do the same process that we had just talked about on this where I will re-wet it down. Um, I let those belts dry out if I need to in between, and then I wet them back down and we go on from there. Um, let's see, right here at the base of that stem, I'm just going to put a little seed pod right in there. just touches that stem off a little bit um, and gives me a shot to come in behind that seed. I'm going to use a small mule's foot here, and we're going to you can hear that difference fading out through there. And I'm going to roll that around, and it's pointing back down, down the stem uh, is where that point is headed to. I'm going to come in on the base of this leaf on this stem down here without the seed pod, but I'm just going to roll it around there as well couple other little places I'm going to use this um, right in here where that kind of splits I'm going to put two or three little guys right there and then at the base of this seed pod in here I'm going to come in with a couple as well again just little things kind of touch that off and, um, and highlight that all right, now moving on, I'm gonna get our veiner out. And this is uh, just a small scalloped veiner. And I'm gonna use this few different spots here. One, I'm gonna come around the outside of this flower stem. Notice I tip this way up. I just want the tip of that right out there on the edge. And I want the rest to fade across there. I'm going to catch the inside of it as well. Again, just, you can hear that just barely ticking in there to kind of touch that off, help round that stem out. Come down, right down here on the outside of that leaf stem. 
and then I'm going to use it right along this line of that leaf. And you notice that leaf is turning out this way. I'm going to have the curve of that vayner go in the same direction. Now I'm going to watch. I don't want, I'm not looking at this edge of the tool because I don't want to think, okay, I want this heading out this direction. So I look at those two points because the line where I'm actually hitting is coming back, right? So watch, be sure and just watch where your actual tool is going to hit when you tip that up uh, so you're keeping track of the right thing. You notice I fade, rolled that around there as we went to. Okay, there's two kind of swirls up in here that I want to hit with this. We're going to come right here. We're going to start real light. And they get a little deeper as they go. But again, tipping that way up and rolling around there as we come around. Same thing going the other direction on this one. Starting light, picking up, turning that a little bit as we go. Hitting the camera, shaking that around just to make sure you guys are awake. All right. We got those set in there. We are getting down there, rocking and rolling. Um, okay, coming in on this flower. We're gonna do a little flower center. This here is just a, a small seed that I'm gonna put right in the middle here. And then what I'm gonna use to line that seed, I'm gonna go back to my um, vertical line thumbprint, the Size number one, we had determined earlier. I'm gonna get the little end of that and tip it way up here because this is a little tiny seed. So my actual center liner is too big. The concave end is too big to fit around that small little circle of a seed. You can hear that difference there as well. I start out soft on the edge of that pedal, get a little deeper through the middle and soften up a little bit as we go. All right, set that aside. I'm gonna come back to my extra, uh, XX steep checkered bevel. And I'm gonna bring the, these pedal lines right back to that center. Now we're getting a lot of definition in that flower. Once those are reset, I'm gonna come back with that seed in the middle there. As you can see, everything's kind of crowded in on it. We're gonna just retouch that, kind of crisp him up a little bit. There we go, that helps it a lot. All right, now we have made it. We are down to the last couple little steps here. Um, two more tools we're gonna use, and we were gonna call it good. This uh, this tool here is my round checkered bevel. It's the, the smallest round checkered bevel that Barry King offers. I'm gonna come in where those foldovers are and I use this in place of a lifter. Um, I just really like the checkering in it. Uh, and I like the, the roundness of the shape in there. Just does a great job. You can see lifting that stuff up and really highlighting it with the, with that checkering in there as well. So you know, right there on the end of that, we go both different both directions there, and it just tucks that leaf right in underneath that um, that little vine right there. 
anywhere that we rolled over and use that to highlight that shadowing in there. Same thing like right up in here. Touch that off. And out here, this is a couple last little places we'll use this. Right there where we had originally talked about that ridge that we created in the center with our shader. Able to get underneath that and really pick that up in the middle there. Same thing out here on this stump. Right there on the end. Okay, set that aside. Get out our swivel knife and we're gonna do some decorative cuts in here. Last little part um, of this portion for this video that we're doing here for part number three. And then we'll be coming back and doing uh, a couple more parts to this series to finish this pattern out. Now with the decorative cuts, there's not a definite right or wrong where the idea behind them is to help add flow um, to your pattern and accent some of the other hard work that we've been doing. So that being said, uh, one of the biggest mistakes you can get to when you're first starting is getting too carried away. Um, and I don't know if it's when you first start or just a little bit after when you get a little too confident and <laughs> you start doing a little too much in there. And um, I can still do that at times. Think, oh, just a little bit more here, a little bit more there. And then you wind up going, oh, I wish I could erase that. But unfortunately, decorative cuts are a part of this that are really hard to uh, mask. So take your time, be sure you're placing cuts where you want them at. Um, and a good, uh, kind of a good rule of thumb on where you're gonna put them at is where you've used your shader at, start looking, because that's gonna be pretty close to where you're gonna want to, to use them at. That's not a hard, fast rule, but it's just a good idea to, to get you started in the right direction anyways. Um, if you've uh, taken, taken the drawing course with me or any other drawing classes or some of the free content that we've put out talking about drawing and you've heard me talk about the, some of those imaginary lines that were going and, and more the skeleton of your pattern, that's going to be... Um, that's gonna come in really crucial when you're doing your decorative cuts. It's gonna show you where you're pulling those cuts to. So right here in this seed pod that we talked about, I'm actually gonna do a little cross hatch. Just some cuts both directions. It's a little tiny seed pod, so it takes little tiny decorative cuts, but that touches it off and our antique will pick that up and help pop that. Getting down there. Just a few more places to put these cuts in. Oh, there you go. Hit the camera. Make sure you guys are awake still. All right, we're going to do, we're down to the flower and our leaf there. So really important on your cuts with your flower make sure that you're pulling those towards your center. That's going to, you may start them, um, they don't have to all run straight at your center. They, a little curve in there, some hooks. Uh, I'll show you a couple different ways here, but even I could start this turning all the way backwards here as long as I wind up pointing at that center. See, we can make that flow. This one here, I can even go the other direction and then snake back. Watch for that base cut there, that one. There we go. OK, 
Carol comments on here. So you jumped the gun. You're just ready to antique. That is awesome. Uh, be sure and shoot pictures or put them in the comments. Love to see. Um, love to see what you're working on there. Same goes for, for anybody else on here. If you have this pattern and are tooling along, um, or if you ever get this pattern and decide to tool it, be sure and send me pictures, shoot them out. Love to see everybody's take on it and, and what you get done on them. So that's always, always fun. And then uh, seeing what you decide to build with it or put it on, uh, if it's something other than a, a wall hanging piece for you. But, okay, now this leaf here, I'm going to come actually the other direction. Then we'll swoop it back in there. Um, if you have been in the, or checked out the uh, swivel guide tutorial, um, that's on our YouTube page and it has a free download with it too. But um, you're going to notice some of those cuts, the, that S and that C kind of rolling in there. But there we have it. Uh, just taking a quick glance over. I don't think we missed any cuts in it. But that is going to do it for part number three of this tooling series. And again, we're just breaking this pattern down step by step. Um, I appreciate you guys following along. Um, be sure to, to keep watch for um, part number four and five. We're going to break down. I'm going to do the this top floral section that makes up that headdress as well as another video will go over all of our feather detail um, and and finish out that headband there as well and we'll get this pattern put together so uh, thank you again i appreciate it uh, if you do want this pattern and haven't got it yet it should be in the description um, be sure to like follow subscribe all the good stuff click the button so you don't miss when we come live here on facebook or uh, post new videos to youtube um, also if you want to be kind of first to know when new patterns or courses come available uh, be sure to get, make sure you are part of the 23 plus crafters community that's going to be our email list that gets um, gets the first noticed and first savings on all that stuff so um there is, uh, if you check out on the website on 23plus.com, um, in the main menu, check out 23plus uh, crafters community, and it tells you all about that and how to sign up for that. So thank you guys. Have a great evening or afternoon if you're on the other part of the country. So thanks a lot.